Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, CAF and President Sergio Diaz Granado and all the team of the CAF for inviting. Thank you, Financial Times, also. It's in, it is an honor for me as the recently re-elected president of the Dominican Republic this past May to open this important conference. I would like to express my gratitude to the Financial Times and to, to the Latin American and Caribbean Development Bank, CAF, for their kind invitation. For over 50 years, the Dominican economy has recorded a remarkable achievement in the region, an average annual economic growth of around 5%, reaching a GDP of over $130 billion, making the Dominican Republic the seventh largest economy in Latin America and the Caribbean. The widely recognized political stability of the country is the result of the strength of our democracy. Since 1978, we have held 13 consecutive presidential elections and six peaceful transfer of power from one party to the other. Likewise, the macroeconomic stability has attracted investors to the favorable business climate in the country. The result is a significant flow of foreign direct investment, which in recent years has accounted for nearly 4% of GDP, one of the highest in the region. This reality has been acknowledged by Fitch, Standard & Poor's, and Moody's, which have recently improved our rating or perspective. Additionally, according to the Emerging Market Bond Index, EMBI, the country risk of Dominican Republic is lower than that of other nations with an investment grade rating, allowing a lower cost of accessing the financial markets. For an audience of experts, this meeting is essential for developing new approach that facilitate timely and suitable access to international financing for infrastructure investment. Allow me to provide a few Dominican examples that will find an eco in the region. In the energy sector, we will need to invest about $5.4 billion in the next few years to continue the significant transformation in generation, transmission, and distribution. Our goal is to achieve a cold reserve by 2027, creating a surplus that would allow us to lay a submarine cable to sell electricity to Puerto Rico. Another goal is to reach 30% renewable by 2030. Regarding the crucial issue of logistics, we have been developing the physical and human infrastructure required for the Dominican Republic to be recognized as a world-class logistic hub. In port connectivity, we have 10 seaports handling international cargo on the way to reaching 2.5 million TEUs per year. We also have eight airports connecting us with 170 destinations worldwide. We have built numerous tourist ports and fishing docks. And on our northern coast at the port of Manzanillo, we are building a large multimodal logistic dock that will bring Dominican export even closer to the eastern coast of the United States. Additionally, we have a dynamic private sector committed to public-private partnership to expand, build, and operate ports and airports. Given that connectivity, is an essential element for trade, tourism, and investment. We have recently signed significant open skies agreements with the United States and Canada this, just in the, this year and the last year. My government is developing an integrated transportation system for the two most important urban areas in the country, the city of Santo Domingo and Santiago which includes major infrastructure projects such as monorails, cable cars, and the expansion of the Santo Domingo Metro. Our strength in attracting foreign investment is evident in our tourism sector, especially in the East Coast in Punta Cana and Miches. We are now promoting a new tourist hub in the south of the country, in Pedernales. We are also revitalizing the Puerto Plata tourist area with the development of Playa Bergantin, Bergantin is an ambitious tourism and real estate project developed by the, pri by the private and public sector and aimed at fostering innovation in the digital field. It will include, among other features, an academic innovation campus, a film studio, a golf course, and ample road infrastructure. 
technology is fundamental to sustainable and rapid development. That is why we issued the decree declaring the promotion, innovation, and development of the semiconductor industry as a high national priority and ordering the formation of a national strategy for the promotion of the semiconductor industry. In the mining sector, we are committed to expanding operations in the Dominican Republic. The country has gold, silver, and nickel, and has had bauxite, ladies and gentlemen. Where there is bauxite, rare earth elements are usually present, and we are currently exploring this possibility with the assistance of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. We are also quite aware of the international standards set for mining by the Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative, EITI, which we adopted in 2016. Ladies and gentlemen, we are fully committed to paving the way for new infrastructure investment, which are essential to driving sustainable development and achieving a virtuous circle of prosperity and growth in the Americas. Inclusive and sustainable economic growth, political stability, and individual freedom and intrinsically link and can only truly thrive under democratic systems that protect human rights. Development within a democracy is a fundamental factor in delivering the fruits of that democracy to all our citizens. Working toward these goals in the most valuable, is the most valuable legacy we can leave to our future generations. Let me close with a very clear message. Our government is pro-business. Our government is pro-jobs. Our government is pro-growth and pro-innovation. Innovation. Please visit and invest in the Dominican Republic soon. I wish you a successful and productive meeting. Thank you very much.